That's a sick outfit. I have to say, <laughs> that's a puppy. That's a young pup. That's my actual bedroom, just so you know. Chris Traeger on Mars? Come on. Who doesn't want to see that guy on Mars? I know I do. Hi, I'm Rob Lowe, and this is my E.T. Retrospective. When I get in a fight, I want to stomp and lock it, too. The year, 1983. E.T. was with the then 19-year-old Rob after he landed his first big movie role in The Outsiders alongside Patrick Swayze and Tom Cruise. When you're still trying to find some sort of success, it's very important to be very serious. But then once you reach a certain level where you've done a few films, then it's a real trap if you start taking yourself too seriously. I like the Don Johnson Miami Vice outfit I have on. I mean, if it's not fun, why are you there? I mean, what is the point? It's gotta be fun, it's just a job. Less hair gel would be my first piece of advice to young Rob Lowe. I like the boldness of inviting E.T. into my actual parents' home. I was still living at home. That was among the coldest and wettest I've ever been. We didn't have places to get warm. You know, we're all best, best friends, but also really competitive. So everybody had their own fight they'd choreographed with their own stuntman. It was like a big deal. By 1984, Rob was a big deal. He was a full-blown heartthrob and part of the Brat Pack, a nickname first given to Rob and some of his St. Elmo's Fire co-stars. I feel comfortable enough with, within myself to come out and say, all right, guys, let's go at it in a, in a competitive way in the healthiest sense, you know? It's like, all right, I dare you to be as good as me. It was a fun time. If you stumble into being an it person, it's a very odd, fun, confusing, ridiculous, you know, and uh, I, I, we, I enjoyed it. <laughs> The following year, our cameras rolled as Rob and Jim Belushi caused chaos at a photo shoot with the cast of About Last Night. I am not a model. We are not, okay, we're actors being clear. forced to, to do, do this. this shot. It's in our contracts. That photo shoot is, uh, I think, on the uh, DVD or VHS copy of that movie. One of my favorite movies. Belushi and I just ran roughshod over everybody. And Elizabeth Perkins, I don't think there's ever been a better debut by anybody. She's amazing at it, and Demi is fantastic in it. Demi and um, Ghost and About Last Night, for me, are her two best pieces of work, for sure. To Wayne's World. To, to Wayne's, Wayne's World. World! That's one of my favorite scenes that I got to do in Wayne's World. A lot of people don't realize that Lorne Michaels, the great producer of Saturday Night Live, sort of ghost wrote all of my dialogue. I also remember I had to postpone my honeymoon with my wife. We got down to Cabo, and my deal to do the movie closed, and we had to turn right around and come home. What you do is you put your shoulder into her and you push. And they fall over. <laughs> this is my contribution to the Tommy Boy. I had the idea for the cow tipping thing, because they do that in Ohio, and nobody ever heard of it in Hollywood. They, did, they thought it was a joke, but they put it in the, put it in the show. Those were real cows being stampeded in front of you and behind you. I, I, I don't think they'd let actors do that today. It was very muddy, very cold, and very funny. Also very funny, young number two in Austin Powers. Thank you. You know, Dr. Evil, I received your memo from the future. Your new lair is up and running. Then it's all going perfectly to plan. <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing golf with Mike Myers when he was writing the movie, and I, he, and I was he was telling me Robert Wagner was going to be in the movie, and I started imitating R.J. as we call him, and he liked the impersonation so much that he wrote me as a younger version of him into the show. Rob's been in showbiz for six decades with over 50 movie credits. The 59-year-old also made a name for himself on the small screen. Yeah, definitely. It's, hey, it's Rob Lowe, it's Sam Seaborn. Now I get it, Sam Seaborn, too. So I, I now have two names, which is kind of nice. Beijing wants you to scale back the weapons, and you're not going to do it. Right. Looking back on the West Wing, I know it gives people a lot of comfort, and people still love it, and they always, it's an evergreen, and I love that. But it also feels a, plays a, a lot more like a fantasy, and it feels a little, feels a little like, oh, it feels like a little quaint, oh. Aren't, isn't that cute? There's literally nothing in this world that you cannot do. Literally. Literally? Literally? It was literally just a small calzone. Literally a small calzone. 
I don't know how the literary thing happened. I mean, clearly I lean into that word. And I think I just leaned into it maybe a little too hard one day. As for a potential Parks and Rec reunion? What a love fest that show is and was. We're all still in a group text. Um, I play golf with Pratt once a week. Saw Rashida just the other day. I mean, everybody on that show is super special to me. We would all jump at the chance to be in the same room, no matter what we were doing. With perfectly good looks and an expansive career, Rob became the butt of the joke in 2016. It's not easy being Rob. He said being so handsome made it difficult for him to find meaningful roles. I wanted to ask Brad Pitt about that, but he was too busy acting in meaningful roles. <laughs> I used to love watching JFK's uh, um, press conferences, and he was so self-deprecating about himself and so funny about himself. And all my heroes are like that. All my heroes can get the joke and can take the joke. I had to ask you know, my wife, and she was like, you are not, you, absolutely not. You're not going to, to do a roast. I said, why not? She goes, because you will embarrass yourself and be humiliated in front of the world. I said, honey, that ship has sailed. But his biggest accomplishment to date? Did you guys want to come or did he make you? Oh, he made us. He made <laughs> we, we wanted to come. Yeah, it's good to always come with him. His two boys, Matthew and John Owen. What do you think of dad? Is he, is, because we, I know him as the big TV movie star. What do you, what do you think? Well, is, he that? is he all that, a bag of chips? Yeah, and he's definitely a good dad, you know. Yeah. He takes care of us. They're so cute. You know, I moved them out of LA so they wouldn't grow up in a show business world. Um, but also, it, it also felt really super inauthentic and phony to pretend that this isn't my job and that this isn't my life. So I would try to judiciously pick moments to bring them into my world. I think that was um, one of the many years The Office was nominated and they were huge Office fans. They'd be like, Steve Carell's here, Steve Carell's. And I could go introduce them and it was really fun. I can't get them to watch anything that I've been in. I mean, it's like, it's, I mean, I got a, a, a kid at Stanford, a, a law school, a kid at law school, and none of them have ever even seen The West Wing. It's true. I had to create a show with John Owen to get him to watch a show that I'm in. I can't even remember the last time we've had a chance to just the three of us get away. I'm happy to be here because this is just fun. I remember the president of A&E Studios came to me and said, your wife and you um, have been really successful in real estate. Would you ever do a show about real estate? I said, no. What I would do is a show about finding Bigfoot. That show to me was Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown meets Scooby-Doo. And what could be better? I had more fun with my boys traveling the country in that stupid truck and just talking and being with them. I didn't worry about what it meant. Does it seem stupid? It's like, it felt like fun to me. Following the low files, Rob and John Owen teamed up once again for Unstable, which just got picked up by Netflix for season two. I'm not coming to work for you. I play the flute. That did not sound strong. That's because it's the flute. Johnny, uh, you know, I still write him. You know, I write him about his hair and makeup. I write him about his pacing. Kid's got a lot to learn. I said to him, I said, kid, these reviews, you should put them on your wall and never read another review again because you might not ever get reviews like this again. Um, and then we got our second season and we're actually shooting first day today. This is my lunch break. I came to be with you guys. So um, it's, it's a dream. Well, that's your ET retrospective. I'm both like, Ah, yeah, I'm kind of proud of that. And then, oh, wow, that's really mortifying. It is amazing how long E.T. has been in my life. It's amazing. Honestly, I think it might have been my first filmed interview. Wow. To many, many more decades. We'll be back, yeah, in another, in another 40 years, we'll do this again.